Aloha, my name is Rachel Rounds and I work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. I'm going to talk to you today about our efforts to eradicate Sancris echinatus, or common sandbird, from the island of Nihoa. Nihoa is a 63-hectare volcanic remnant in Papahanaumokuakea, supporting one of the most intact coastal ecosystems in the Hawaiian Islands. Nihoa's endemic biota includes two endemic and endangered passerines, the Nihoa finch or polyhoa, and the Nihoa millerbird or ululu, and three endemic plants. A diverse native arthropod community thrives on Nihoa, including island oddities like a giant trapdoor spider, giant cricket, and giant earwig. Nihoa also has seven species of endemic land snails, including an endodonta species, which is the last member of its genus in Hawaii. The endangered endemic Shadea verticillata. Porchilaca velosa. A polyhoa or nihoa finch in an endangered lolu. Cypress is an invasive annual grass that was first discovered on nihoa in 1961 on the towel of an army officer camped on the island. A weed risk assessment for Sencris identified the species as high risk because it thrives and spreads in tropical climates, is an invasive weed that affects native coastal vegetation and seabird habitat, has spiny burrs that disperse easily via clothing or feathers, reproduces by prolific seed production, is easily spread by high winds and storms, and reaches maturity in less than one year. For these reasons, we have decided to eradicate Sencris from Nihoa despite the many challenges that we face. The Nihoa landing is very challenging. Nihoa can only be accessed during spring and summer months when swells are small and the landing is accessible. Landing at Nihoa involves use of a small boat that can time the swells correctly and allow passengers to jump from the boat to a wave-swept rocky ledge. Even in the summer, there are days when the swells are too large to land people on the island. Because of this, work on Nihoa can only occur during short trips in the summer, and this limits our options for invasive weed control. We must balance our time on island with survival of the seabird colonies that Nihoa supports, meaning we only spend one to two weeks on Nihoa per year. From 2011 to 2020, we visited Nihoa once a year in the fall after the growing season was complete. Fall was chosen because our presence has the smallest impact on seabird species at that time. From 2011 to 2017, we searched for and removed all synchronous plants that we found and as many seeds as we could pick out of the ground. And during this time, we had an average of seven plants per year. However, removing seeds from one large plant could take hours, and arriving when synchronous plants were already dead meant that some years we likely missed plants that had seeded and died before we arrived. In 2018, we found over 600 plants and were unable to remove all the plants and their seeds. At this point, we realized we needed a more effective strategy. One of the reasons we use the pre-emergent esplanade is because we can only access the island two times a year due to a rough landing. So we can't use other tools that have been used to control synchrous in the past, like Roundup. So we went with a pre-emergent herbicide so that we can try to control the plant even though we can only come twice a year. We selected Esplanade, active ingredient in Dazaflam, to eradicate synchrous because its effectiveness lasts about six months and it's labeled for use in Hawaii and for restoration. Esplanade's downsides are that it can affect native seed germination, is toxic to marine life, and a half of inch of rain is needed one month after application for it to be effective. Esplanade forms a molecular barrier on the soil that prevents seed germination. We spray all sites where synchrous is found, unless it's in a gulch, and try to cover the entire area of the seed fall. We still continue to pull all plants and remove large piles of seeds as needed. We collect standardized data using field maps at every synchrous location. Finally, in 2021, we began visiting Nihoa in the spring to hit synchrous during or soon after its growing season. The spiral comb on top, you can see this here. Doesn't seem like much, but it's a dead giveaway that you're looking at synchrous down below the plants. Their tie is cutting the seed heads off of the synchrous to collect them to take back with us, and then we will pull the plant. Most of the seeds that this patch had already set were on the ground. Plants were mostly dead, unfortunately. But we cleared the area and now we'll spray herbicide in these three patches where you see people sitting and see Ziploc bags full of uh, 
dead sankaris that we collect. This orange flag indicates a former sankaris site that we sprayed that no longer has any sankaris left at the site. But we do have a lot of pregnant birds. Often might get seeds stuck on your clothing. So before you move out of the spray zone, before you move out of the sankaris zone, you should do a thorough check of your clothing, your butt, especially around your ankles and your shoes. These ones are clean. Rachel is done. A proper check. Mihoa is a very challenging place to camp and to traverse. The train is steep with loose rocks everywhere and seabirds both underfoot and diving at you simultaneously. Moving around Mihoa requires agility, bravery, skill, patience, and all four limbs. It can take one hour to walk to each end of the island, even though it's only about half a mile. There's very little shade or escape from the heat. And when it does rain, our camp is at the bottom of a gulch. We monitor Nihoa's weather with the satellite weather station. This helps us understand the relationship between synchrous phenology and rainfall. In addition, we have placed remote cameras on synchrous patches to monitor synchrous growth and phenology during the winter months when we can't visit the island. We have seen a reduction in the number of synchrous plants on Nihoa over the past four years. We had a setback in 2020, as many projects did due to COVID, as our spring 2020 trip was canceled. In the summer of 2020, the Category 1 Hurricane Douglas hit Nihoa straight on. We believe that many seeds were blown and spread around the island, especially since we found new plants upslope from previous infestations. And we think that the hurricane may explain the uptick in numbers in May 2021. On our April 2022 trip, we found 197 Sankris plants, which is a 70% reduction from the spring of 2021 and well surpasses our goal of a 50% reduction in plant numbers per year. These maps show the changes in Sankris distribution on Nihoa from 2011 till 2021. Results from the April 2022 trip were not available at the time this presentation was made. Our spray areas around a Sankris plant are usually within one meter of the plant. We try to balance the size of the spray area with the desire to allow native plants to germinate. We try to spray everywhere we find seeds, but are finding that the seeds tend to spread farther than we think. Our data from April of 2022 shows that about 13% of the plants were found within three meters of a previously sprayed location. We have found many of the synchrous plants we find now have sprung up on the edges of the spray area, often hidden under rocks or in seabird burrows, and are becoming increasingly hard to find. We have adjusted our methods to spend more time picking seeds from under rocks and really searching everywhere for spare seeds. In addition, we have widened our spray areas a bit. Esplanade does appear to be effective against Sankris on Nihoa, but we, not, we may not be spraying a wide enough area. Seeds also may spread to new areas via wind or by attaching to the feathers of seabirds. We have noted that the an native annual grass Panicum toridum seems to be coming back strong in areas that have been previously sprayed, and this gives us hope that native plants will continue to reseed sprayed areas. Our goal is that there will be no synchrous plants observed on Nihoa by the spring of 2029 and that we can declare synchrous eradicated by 2034. We are basing this goal off of an expected 50% reduction in the number of plants we find every spring. In conclusion, I want to thank all the hardworking biologists, boat crew, and office staff that have helped with the Sankris Eradication Project since it started in 2019. I also want to thank Sheldon Plentovich of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who is my co-lead for this project. And I will end this presentation with a recording from a song made our place near the peak of Nihoa in 2019. Thank <laughs> you.